Hi guys. It is now sunset. Getting ready to be a cold winter night. Imagine that, finally. A cold winter night here in the former paradise. The shithole of Garfield, Texas here on this chilly Tuesday evening. Where are we? December 17th, 2019 or somewhere in there. So I have been spending most of my day uh, preparing for and interviewing this fellow named uh, William Rees. I've been trying to get William on the show uh, for good lord over a year finally got to sit down and have an intelligent conversation with William Rees about how completely fucked we are and I will be bringing that interview out in a in a couple of weeks uh, he will be the last interview of the year but anyway uh, so it is now sunset and I am just getting around to uh, remembering that I do have this other channel and uh, and I am very sorry I cannot remember the uh, the Alert Tribes member who sent me this so many of you are sending me so many things I really appreciate it this essay about the newest 20 not just 2019 roundup, but the decade roundup as we head into 2020. But I do remember, uh, and I want to send a big thank you out to uh, Kind Hearted Tribes member Frederic. Frederic, who uh, has one more time stepped up to the plate with her kind, I guess, Christmas bonus here for me and the little dog for our work on YouTube. I told her I would uh, I would apply the money towards the propane bill that those uh, fucking deadbeats up there in New York are running up in my absence. Uh, <laughs> oh Jesus, but that will be my Thursday wine. But today, we're not whining, we're ranting, and there will probably be many more versions of other of these Roundup stories, both uh, for the Roundup of 2019 and the whole decade. Some discussion, I consider a decade to end on December 31st of the number of the year with nine in it, that the new decade starts in, you know, zero, zero, zero. I, I consider the new decade to begin on January 1st, 2020. And there, I know some people say, no, the 2020s do not begin till 2021. But as I told that guy, uh, however you uh, want, want to frame it, no, w whatever choice you use, we're still fucked. That's the bottom line. We're so fucked whether the 2020s begins obviously on January 1st, 2020, or whether it uh, begins on January 1st, 2021. We'll just be a little more fucked in 2021 than we are in 2020. But. Anyway, we're looking back over the entire decade, going back to uh, January 1st, 2010, on this outfit called Gizmodo.com. I've read from them before. So they're doing a whole, uh, a whole series of articles uh, looking back at our passing decade and look ahead at what kind of future awaits us in the next 10 years. Oh boy. And so this one in this uh, roundup of the 2010s, they're looking at what they erroneously call all 
of the species that went extinct in 2010 is actually a tiny little fraction of uh, the species that went extinct in the year 2010, as they kind of admit to in here. So they came up with 160 species that went extinct over the past 10 years when there are many ecologists saying we are losing 160 species every single day uh, of the year. Uh, so whatever, uh, 160 times 365 times 10 uh, would be a bet, would be a closer honest look of how many species. Uh, but anyway, wherever you want to draw the number, this is Gizmodo's Roundup, and we're going to start with the uh, lonesome death of Lonesome George. I remember reporting on Lonesome George's death eight years ago. Okay, take it away, Gizmodo and Lonesome George. Lonesome George, the last of the Pinta Island tortoises, died in 2012. George's story is the perfect extinction story. It features a charismatic character with a recognizable face, <clears throat> an obvious villain, which would of course be humans, and the tireless efforts of naturalists and the, uh, you know, the operative words in this story are the obvious villain, which are fucking humans, are the obvious villain in this story. <coughs> so the population of the Pinta Island tortoises species was decimated. This is one of the uh, Galapagos Islands one of their giant tortoise <clears throat> species. The population of the Pinta Island tortoise species was decimated by whalers hunting and eating them during the 19th century. Uh, this zoologist with a name I could not begin to pronounce discovered George in 1971, 1971, and brought him into captivity, and no other Pinta Island tortoises have since been found. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature declared this species extinct in the wild in 1996, while researchers attempted to breed George with other tortoises, you know, outside of his specific gene pool, to at least preserve his genetic material. But George died of natural causes, sparking news stories about his life and legacy, which media outlets continue to cover to this day. But George, Lonesome George's story, is not a typical extinction story. Perhaps a better mascot of the extinction crisis is Plectosoma sarcaphalum, a small snail called a micro jewel for its beautiful intricate shell that once inhabited a single limestone hill in Malaysia. During the last decade, a cement company wiped the hill off the map for its valuable resources, otherwise known as limestone sand, rendering the micro jewel snail extinct. And this is uh, the reason, uh, th this is the true extinction crisis uh, on going on on this planet every day. Scientists estimate that species are now going extinct 1,000 times faster than they should be, and literally dozens go extinct each day. But 
these estimates are not made from stories about the big, rare zoo attractions. Most of those victims are likely invertebrates, plants, plants are species, and other beings you may not think much about. Even figuring out the actual extent of the biodiversity crisis is difficult given how hard it is to estimate what we don't know. Earth might be home to anywhere from 5 million to 10 million species, or perhaps a trillion when you start talking about bacteria, mainly. Uh, according to disparate estimates, of which researchers have cataloged less than 2 million. The IUCN's red list names only a thousand extinct or extinct in the wild species, but one paper estimated that 7% of the known extant species might be extinct if you include estimates of invertebrate extinctions, which by invertebrates, you know, animals without backbones, which will obviously include insects. They include everything from insects to, uh, there's another story in here about mussels, about freshwater mussels. Uh, you know, the millions of species of animals that uh, just don't have backbones. <laughs> Below, we have compiled a list of the species, as, as I say, there's 160, that the IUCN declared extinct in the past mm -hmm. decade. Our list does not include species still around, but declared extinct in the wild meaning the ever-growing number of species where the only place you can find them is in zoos, otherwise known as being functionally extinct. So this list does not include that, that ever-growing number. <clears throat> uh, so the list contains only 160 species, many of which were last seen many years ago, or only discovered recently. Generally, it takes decades without a sighting of a species, plus dedicated searches before researchers can fully establish that no individuals are left. Declaring a species extinct itself can be an act of giving up, or worse, once a species is considered extinct, governments may no longer feel the need to fund protection for its habitat, like governments feel a need to fund the habitat of animals that haven't gone extinct. Anyway, but the trends, which what we're looking for here, but the trends that connect these 160 extinctions are true of the biodiversity crisis more generally and the kinds of species it lists, plus how they went extinct, are even more relevant in the present day and uh, will become more relevant every day. In order to create this list, we filtered the IUCN's red list just to species that scientists assessed as extinct this decade, removed any that had been previously declared extinct, and wrote a summary of what each species was, where it lived, and how and when it went extinct. And obviously, guys, I'm not going to have uh, time to go over this. And anyway, my computer has jammed. Uh, I don't know what. I think it's probably this ad from Amazon.com. 
is what is jamming my computer, which uh, is showing me an Amazon.com ad over some dead bird, some little dead bird. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here. My uh, computer is quickly going extinct. This, this computer has truly been a uh, piece of shit since the day I bought it from uh, Amazon.com, but it looks like we might be getting back to the story uh, which wants to, uh, oh boy, okay, real slowly, species today typically go extinct due to one or a combination of several factors. Number one, humans clearing their habitat. Number two, humans purposefully or inadvertently introducing invasive species into their habitats. Number three, humans polluting their habitats. Number four, humans over-harvesting these species for food or other uses. Or humans indirectly harming habitats through the effects of climate change. And of course, this, uh, this whole thing about climate change is going to be a bigger and bigger reason uh, as we move into the future. Uh, while a fraction of these 160 are rare and charismatic species that occur over a large area, a majority are lesser known and live only in very limited areas such as on single mountains in fragments of habitat that humans have not uh, destroyed, single watersheds that humans have not destroyed, or on islands that humans have not yet destroyed. Uh, Though they're not crowd pleasers, these endemic plants and animals serve important purposes in their environments, what biologists call ecosystems services. Uh, this is Gerardo Ceballos, who I need to interview, uh, an ecologist. Uh, these are the services we get from the proper function of nature. Yes. Uh, so, when, we, when you hear about e ecological services, these include maintaining the levels of certain gases in the atmosphere, cleaning the water, don't forget pollinating the plants, and other services that work better in non-degraded habitats. The problem transcends extinctions, especially when these ecosystems service providers are extirpated from a given range. Yes, uh, and so we see these studies documenting declines in the overall populations of insects, and then of course when the insects uh, crash, the birds that survive off the insects crash, and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, here's where we're supposed to tell you that it's not all doom and gloom, that there is something that you can do, that you can do to stop the sixth mass extinction. Uh-huh. Yes, it is true that humans can do a lot to stave off a species extinction. This is Stuart Pym, who I just recently interviewed. Quote, we can set aside more protected areas and tread through life more carefully. Yes, 
nonprofits are attempting to fight the crisis. But this long list of species declared extinct, and again, we have this many species going extinct every single day of every single year, should show you just how serious the crisis here is and how the mere act, the mere act of humans showing up someplace can precipitate ecological disaster. I would change that to the horrific act of humans showing up anywhere will and always will precipitate ecological disaster is how that Senate should read. Have hope if you are able to, but know that it is going to take serious, coordinated, international effort, some of which may be uncomfortably radical in order to maintain the health of our planet and the species we share it with and thrive as a species ourselves. Yes. Uh, have hope if you dare to as we slog into the year 2020. Good God Almighty. The 2020s. What a decade to be a doomsday prophet as every single piece of uh, news, piece of data unfolding. It is worse than we thought, faster than we thought, and the 2020s promise to be the we are so fucked decade until the 2030s get here. All right, it is margarita time here in the end times. So I'm going to go pour my first drink of the night and begin to numb myself and uh, sink deeper and deeper into depression as I go plumb Netflix for uh, Escape from the Doomosphere. Oh yeah, we're so fucked. I need a drink, little dog. Bye, guys.